My name is Tom Jenkins. I'm professor at Clemson University in South Carolina, and I grew up in Pennsylvania, so I went on to Penn State for a bachelor's and a master's degree. And then uh, as I continued on from there, I went to Cornell, got a PhD, and uh, stayed in the Northeast, so I went over to Ohio State after that and did a postdoc uh, there for a few years, and then um, made my way down south to Clemson University, and I've been there ever since uh, for 27 years now. And uh, during that whole time, um, my work is in lipid metabolism in ruminants, and I focus most of my attention on dairy cattle, although I've done some beef and sheep work as well. And uh, I've done everything from very uh, um, up applied sort of studies on feeding different types of fats and looking what it does to the lactation performance of cows to very basic studies on the pathways of lipid metabolism in the rumen and, and, and biohydrogenation process that goes on. Yeah, it was a couple years ago that I got pulled into this because uh, some work at Washington State was showing an improvement in milk fat percentage or content uh, from feeding potassium carbonate. And uh, so um, uh, several people came to me and said, uh, well, we know that milk fat content is connected to the, the rumen production of some bioactive lipids. Can we find any evidence that feeding potassium is changing these bioactive lipids? So I ran some <clears throat> continuous culture for mineral work and where we put increasing dosages of potassium carbonate into these fermenters. And sure enough, as we increased the dosage of potassium carbonate, we saw a shift in the type of these bioactive uh, lipids that are produced there. And I, we call those bioactive lipids CLAs. And they're there all the time, but uh, when milk fat drops down or you get milk fat depression, then there's a certain type of CLA that's produced. And we noticed that as we increase the potassium, this so-called, let me call it bad CLA that causes milk fat depression went away or went down, indicating to us that the reason these cows were responding to milk fat was because of the potassium carbonate cutting down on the rumen production of these uh, CLAs that cause a problem. And then I followed that up the next year with another study, pushed the system a bit in continuous culture feeding high doses of fat and potassium and got the same results. Once again, good CLAs were going up and bad CLAs were going down as the potassium was delivered to the system. It was the third of our studies now, and it was an extension of the work we've done so far to ask the question, does it matter what is the source of potassium? Because we show good things with potassium carbonate. Can you duplicate those same benefits with another potassium source? So we chose potassium chloride to compare it to, it commonly used. Uh, and um, in, we ran it through my continuous fermenters again, looking for these bioactive lipids. Once again, sure enough, as we saw before, potassium carbonate increased these good CLAs, or bioactive lipids, and, and shut down the bad ones. But the potassium chloride, an equal amount of potassium, potassium chloride had no effect on that whatsoever. Uh, so there was no ability of an equal amount of potassium from potassium chloride to duplicate what we've been seeing with the potassium carbonate. Yeah, well, I would suggest to them that, first of all, they keep up with this research because it's still evolving and still developing, and um, um, we're trying to learn the situations where potassium carbonate will work and be an asset to us and the situations that it might not. But it's important that uh, you manage decad levels properly anyhow uh, in the acid-base balance in the cows. And if, you, especially in heat-stressed environments and hot weather, if you're going to boost up your decad, uh, there's an extra advantage of doing that with potassium supplements. So if you're going to, if you're going to take care of those two problems, 
DCAD and the acid base balance in the cow and deal with the heat stress, then we're seeing additional benefit for you to do this with potassium carbonate. As all our research so far, like I said, is showing that potassium carbonate is inducing the rumen environment to make these good bioactive lipids. So uh, if you're adjusting DCAD, um, you should be thinking about doing it with um, uh, potassium carbonate. Uh, uh, base products. Now there's different products out there and you need to be a little bit careful um, and know a little bit about the differences between them because some of those products uh, when they get mixed with wet feeds can overheat and, and cause heat damage to the feed and cause problems. Other ones are already associated with water and are called a sesquihydrate form and uh, those have eliminated the problem with the heating that goes up. But, but uh, any, any nutritionist that's looking to properly uh, adjust their cow's rations for DCAD should consider potassium carbonate. Now that we're just excited to move on to the next one, the next one is just about already done and, and uh, we'll be talking about that soon and for sure next year at the meetings and I think it's going to yield us another real important part of the puzzle that's going to continue to support potassium carbonate as a good supplement for uh, maintaining high milk fats in cows. So keep up with the research on this.